right up there where it should be and it's going to be a good summer I think for Kerry with Donaghy in form. OK then let's hear from them because after the match uh, Darren Frehel spoke with Kieran Donaghy. Congratulations, Kieran Dan here, the GA man of the match, and uh, you've been making up for last time because you missed uh, most of last season. Yeah, it was, it was tough, do you know, to miss out on last season. Do you know, you only, you only have a certain amount of years at, at this level, and uh, to be sitting out for one is tough. But no, just delighted to be back and back in with the lads and, and back playing championship football, and it's coming a bit early for us this year, but we're just happy to be back. All right, a reminder that we have a hurling preview coming up with Donal and Jer Lachnan later on. But first, we're going to get some previews and predictions from our panel as we look ahead to the business end of the 2010 Football Championship. And the all Ireland Football Final gets underway. Tommy Welch being shown the target and he finds the target perfectly. Great penetrating run. Oh, an impossible angle and he's kicked it over the bar. One Walsh to another and that's a lovely cracking shot over the bar. Kerry win the All-Ireland. Sam Maguire goes back to Kerry. We did a disappointing league campaign this year, so we're, we're, we're really looking forward now to the, the start of the championship in, in less than two weeks. We're reasonably well equipped, but, you know, some of those players like, like, like Dara Shea, Jeremy uh, Murphy, Tommy Welch, Ty Kennelly, you can't, you can't replace those players overnight. So it's, um, it's, it's a work in progress, I suppose. I suppose the last game we played in Crow Park before the Division 1 final was when we lost the All-Ireland final. So I suppose even going up there that day, you'd probably be thinking of um, the last time you were up here, so it can never raise that, you know. I suppose if we have won there plenty of times, but, um, you know, we won a national title in Crow Park and it's a Division 1 title, so that will definitely um, give us some bit of a boost, you know. It would be foolish of us to mention ourselves even in the same breath as Kerry at the moment because we haven't competed at that level for the last number of years and whilst maybe we thought we were there over the last number of years judging by the results we haven't been so all we can do is go back to the drawing board and look we, we play Wexford on the 13th of June and we certainly won't be looking any further than that for the time being. There is a lot of potential in the Galway team but I think there's a steeliness that isn't there, isn't there yet. If we can add, add that to the game, who knows where it'll end. We're meeting Mayo in the first round and they won six out of the seven league games, you know. They got to the league final, that's what they wanted. And look, if one game is not going to make them a bad team overnight, and they'll be coming now with all the ammunition that you guys, the media, are going to give them. And uh, I'm sure they'll be trying to make hay with that. The league is about pre preparing for the championship, and in certain respects, you know, we'd, we'd 90% of the games went well for us, I suppose, and uh, that's the positives we'll be looking at, you know. We're only concentrating on, on the winners of the Derry and our man in the first round. Uh, more than likely, that game will be in Clonus, and beyond that, we wouldn't be looking. But we're looking to be as successful as we possibly can be in, in 2010. No matter who you are, you want to win the first round of the championship, and we've been very focused on that since the championship draw was made. I think Mike McCarthy coming back as well is a big boost for us because Mike is just commands an awful lot of respect from players around him. He doesn't have to say much, and he doesn't say much, but he just does his talking with the way he plays. So I, I, I think we're reasonably fixing that area. Kerry obviously will never write them off, even though you know, they have lost a couple of players over the course of the over the course of the winter. But I think any any team writing off them, any manager writing them off, would be very foolish. First of all, you can't look past uh, Kerry and Tyrone, who have won have won the last seven All Ireland titles between them. Some people may may think that their both teams are slipping. I don't believe that. Yeah, I think it's very hard to to write off Kerry. Um, they've had a few retirements, but still, when you see the players that they had on their bench last year and the young players coming through, a lot of people are saying Cork have a lot of uh, a lot of players to pick from, but you know they, they can only put out any 15 in a given day, and maybe there should be questions about their performances in big games of Cork, Cork Park as well. Michael, is there anything to that argument about the psychological effect that Cork feel when they face Kerry, particularly on Cork Park side? No, I don't think so. I think um, a lot of the media are making this up, to be honest. The players don't feel that way at all. I think um, the Kerry teams have probably beat us in the past, but probably better, as, better players than us at that time. But at the end of the day, you know, they beat everyone else around the country as well, you know. Uh, just because you have the best panel and the best team doesn't always mean that you, that, that you win, because uh, an awful lot of things come into it. Injuries come into it, luck comes into it, uh, cool heads on the day, the experience come, come into it. So there's a lot in the mix, Joe, and, and sure there's still a lot to play for. All right, there's so much to look forward to. Anthony, we've asked you to pick out a couple of players who you think we might keep a special eye out for in the summer. Yeah, and these are two players that I'm actually looking forward to seeing them play in the Championship. We haven't saw that much of them. And the first is Martin Clark from Down. Um, Martin spent three years uh, in Australia with, with Collingwood. Um, a great underage prodigy in, in Down football and colleges football. 
uh, remarkable talent at a young age. Went out to Australia, was a, an absolute created the storm with his, the success he had in his first year in Australia. Yeah. And he's coming back into a, into a team that maybe aren't where ideally where they would want to be or where he would like them to be. And a great tradition in down football, a great tradition of winning all Ireland's. Lots of pressure on Martin Clark. Yeah. Uh, interesting to see how he'll go. His first big test was the league final in Croke Park and he played very well but I thought Down played him too deep played him too mm. much in, in their defence I'd love to see him up the pitch a bit in front okay. of goals and your second, other player second is one of the guys that's tasked with re replacing Kieran Whelan um, Eamon Fennell I like what I saw of, of Eamon Fennell in the league he's big he's strong he's not feared to get stuck in um, he's to me he's, he's the complete package um, it'll be interesting to see if he can make the transition from winter football into summer football into the big open spaces at Crook Park in those big, big championship matches in the summer when, yeah. when Dublin are going to need him um, to be playing and dominating games the way he dominated in the National League. Uh, I mean, he seems, seems to have a great engine. He's got good feet. Um, I like him. I like what I see. And looking forward to see how he'll play during the summer and looking forward to seeing what influence he'll have okay. on the Dublin team. Tony Davis, we asked you to pick a couple. Right, the first guy I picked, and I'm again looking forward to seeing him, seeing what, how, how he integrates into the Tyrone team is Kyle Coney. Uh, one of the ones that didn't go to Australia and stay there. A terrific young footballer. I remember just a couple of years ago watching him out there playing minor. And I suppose what he brings to Tyrone is some young legs and a bit of new enthusiasm. And I suppose in, in a forward line where you have the likes of Mulligan and O'Neill, uh, Sean Cavanagh and himself, they'll be, they'll be a good quartet up in the forward line. He certainly adds an awful lot to them. And number two for you? Number two, another dub, Rory O'Carroll. <laughs> uh, are we building them up yeah, too much? He, he uh, looks, like, looks like a very good player. Did very well in Michael Murphy in the under-21. Uh, he's big and strong. And there's very few natural full-backs in the game, actually. You could nearly name them on two or three in, in the whole country. That's natural full-backs. He certainly looks like, like, like the package in there. And mm -hmm. Dublin have been vulnerable in the full-back line for the last couple of years. And he looks like he'll plug the gap in there for them. Kieran, are they building up Dublin here or what? Yeah, it's typical, isn't it? Build the dubs up for a fall. But uh, I think the two guys I mentioned are two quality footballers. Eamon was very unlucky last year. He had a lot of injuries and he, he had a fantastic league campaign. He scored 10 points from play. Uh, gave him that added support to the forward line. And Roy O'Carroll had a fantastic under-21 mm. All-Ireland final. But keep an eye out for his brother Ross as well. He could be in the full-back line as well. He's been injury-prone, but another top-quality player. Uh, who's your tip for the All-Ireland, though, Kieran? Oh, I'm going to build up Cork, of course. You know, <laughs> definitely the, 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 de definitely were, were the team of the league, no doubt about it. And They put pat patches of play together in the league where they could blitz teams seven, eight points in five, six minutes. Mm -hmm. And they looked to have the strength and depth. Kerry looked sharp and fit today. They're not going to give it up too easy, but they look the two contenders. OK, then. Well, we've asked all of the Sunday Game panellists to give us their predictions for the year. And this is what they've come up with. It's interesting. Here, let's start with Connacht. And there were three counties nominated. Mayo got four nominations, as you see there. Galway got four. And three go for Sligo, who came out of Division 3. Colm O'Rourke, Joe Brawley and Dara Kaneda go for Sligo. In Ulster, six different counties nominated. Three go for Armagh, four go for Tyrone, uh, one each for Down, Monaghan, Donegal and Tommy went for Derry. These were all made, obviously, before the championship began. Uh, so that's the most spread, six nominations there. In Leinster, four nominations. Kevin McStay going for Leash, Colm O'Rourke for Mead, Anthony and Daryl Kinnead for Kildare, and the rest going for the Dubs. What would that be, five Leinster titles in a row if they, if they get it? Six, six. six. <laughs> in Munster, it's either Cork or Kerry. Colm O'Rourke, Pat Blan, and Daryl Kinnead go for Kerry to win the Munster final. And our other two for eight go for Cork to win. So strong for Cork. But what about the All-Ireland? This is the one that counts. And look at that, only three for Kerry and eight for Cork. Colm O'Rourke, Pat Spillane and Joe Brawley had a chat in the afternoon, obviously, and the three of them go for Kerry and eight votes for Cork. So the Sunday game analysts go f overwhelmingly for Cork to win the football. So thanks very much to Anthony, to Tony and especially to Kieran Whelan for joining us tonight. We'll have plenty more special guests to come over the summer. But coming up after the break, we'll be talking hurling with Don Grady and Gerlach Nan. Tip really, they had us, they had us last year and early, you know, and um, there's a few small things on the day, they could easily won, but um, this year, Gold has seen to be the team, the league. If you were a gambling man, you would have to back Kilkenny, going for their, their five in a row, if you know that kind of way, but then you have the likes of Galway, the likes of Cork, Watford, ourselves, you know that kind of way, on any given day, any team can beat another.